Experimental Lakes area is the only place in the world where it's possible to do research on whole lakes. We have 58 small lakes that have been set aside for science. The Experimental Lakes area is a research station in northwestern Ontario, kind of halfway between Kenora and Dryden. Uh, that is, does whole ecosystem research trying to understand the impacts that humans are having on freshwater systems. And this area was selected for this research because there's no cities or towns around us. There are very, very few cottages even in the area and none on our lakes. And it's not really accessed by many people except for people canoeing through. And that's important because we want to be able to focus our research questions on whatever the question is and not have outside influences from cities or people. I mean, we look at fish populations and we don't want to have an impact of, of people fishing in those lakes. We want to understand that the impact on fish populations is because of the research, for example. So those big ones are suckers, I think, eh? Hey, look at them. Wow. Oh, they're all trying to break through. <laughs> Hello. All of the research that we do here, we kind of treat our lakes like test tubes. We understand what's in the lake to start with. If you're gonna do a research study in a test tube in a lab, you know exactly what's in your test tube. You add a known amount of something and then you observe the change. And that's what we do too. We understand our lakes before we start and then we'll uh, physically or chemically manipulate it uh, and we'll observe all of the changes in the ecosystem during that time. So how are fish populations changing? How is water chemistry changing? How is algae changing? And then we'll stop the experiment and we'll monitor that lake until it comes back to the way it was before we started. Uh, and that's really important because uh, part of our right to be here by the province of Ontario is to return our lakes to the natural state, but also because you can learn a lot about the environment and freshwater systems and how resilient they are through that long-term monitoring process. And that's important for management. So what we learn by watching how lakes return to their natural state can inform decisions that we should be making on freshwater systems um, around the world. The Experimental Lakes area was first set up because of problems with algae blooms in the Great Lakes, particularly Lake Erie. And scientists knew that algal blooms were happening because of nutrients. Algae is plants that live in the water column. And it was either nitrogen or phosphorus that was resulting in these large algae blooms. But laboratory studies had different results, and so we didn't really know which one it was. And so the first set of studies at the Experimental Lakes area were aimed around that question. What is the nutrient that's resulting in large algae blooms? And to answer that question, we took a lake that shaped a little bit like a butterfly or an hourglass. On the narrow part, we put a plastic curtain with a float on the top, plastic curtain on the bottom, sandbags on the bottom. On one side of the lake, we added carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus. And on the other side, we just added carbon and nitrogen. And the side that had the phosphorus turned bright green because of a large algae bloom. And now, I mean, it didn't take anybody who had a chemistry background or a biology background to look at that picture and understand that something's going on with the phosphorus. Um, and it was because of that work that the government of Canada put in regulations about the amount of phosphorus that we can use in soaps. And now there's regulations all around the world about how much phosphorus can be used in soaps. Mm -hmm.